comes with two things. Hello and welcome to this week's video. A bit of a voiceover exercise for me this one. The sound went completely wrong on this video for some reason. Everything out of sync and no matter what I tried, I just couldn't get it working properly. So I've resorted to voiceover. Welcome to Stuart Farini wood turning. Oh, sorry, I'll try not to make it as cheesy as that for the rest of the way through. Um, a square box with a hollowed out inside which of course isn't square. I quite like the idea of there being a sphere void inside this square box. It was actually done for a club competition and uh, unfortunately not finished in time. Um, anyway, um, mounted between centres, piece of spalted beech, it's about four inches square by about four inches high, ends up a little shorter than that. Um, just decided to do a minimum of shaping on this um, just to keep as much of the wood as possible. The sported wood is fantastic um, and it's just going to have a very simple finish, a simple wax finish. So I started, I wanted to not have it square completely on the outside, I wanted to show that it had been turned. So um, put on a couple of curves at the top and the bottom used a parting tool to help me size and uh, get it ready for going in the chuck. So I could put it in the chuck and hollow it out and then reverse chuck it and finish the bottom. So here you can see me putting those um, chucking points on with the parting tool. And now the centers get removed and I'll get a chuck on and chuck the box in and start hollowing out. Now the hollowing out tools that I used, I used um, the Crown Revolution MIDI and Simon Hope 6mm carbide cutter. I also used a gouge as well. Every time I get to do a bit of hollowing I like to try a few different tools out, try and get myself familiar with them. But before that, because the competition was about using everything from a cube of wood, um, I needed to turn the lid from that cube of wood as well and I didn't want to lose too much height so I took a little core out using my parting tool um, just going in at an angle and uh, taking out a cone far too small a piece to use any of those um, proprietary or commercial coring systems that are out there although I maybe you could use a very 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 small McNaughton one but a parting tool for something this deep was uh, was fine and didn't pose any problems. So with the cone removed I could then clean up the top and uh, define the rim and uh, then it would be uh, onto hollowing. You can see here I'm just cutting in from the outside in because I don't want to get any breakout on those square corners. The eagle-eyed of you um, who perhaps spend as much time as me trawling the internet looking at wood turning videos will have seen me watching the master Jimmy Clues at the very beginning of this video looking at a square oriental box that he turned. Must give one of those a go one day. Anyway with the rim almost uh, almost there um, you can see the lovely figure in the wood that's why I didn't want to um, just turn lots of it away. Right it's not a wood turner's fit in that it's not going to make a soft uh, popping noise when it's removed and it's not going to fall gently into place through gravity. It'll you'll be able to remove it with the merest of touches between two fingertips. Right, so here's the Crown Red Revolution MIDI being used. It was a little large uh, in there, but um, it did a good job. I didn't drill a hole to uh, get my depth set. I just went straight in with that tool. And then I thought, well, I can't really see very much of what's going on and probably you can't as well. So I homemade little LED light strip, um, really useful for this kind of thing. And here's the Simon Hope 6mm tool being used. That cuts beautifully. I really, 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 really like this tool. Um, this little box, yeah, it was just absolutely perfect for. Um, as I said, the Crown Revolution MIDI tiny bit big but it did cope very well with it. Um, the other thing about hollowing of course is you do get a lot of build up of 
chips and shavings inside which can jam your tool so you do need to stop every so often and take out those chips um, you can scoop them out with your finger or a piece of wire or you can use a vacuum hose which uh, is the cleanest easiest tidiest way to do it just getting down to final depth now using my fingers here as a gauge just to check I'm not about to go through the sides and then I've got a scraper tip on now uh, on one of the other my I've got two crown MIDI revolution tools one handled and one unhandled this is the handled one that I keep the scraper tip on and that's really just to smooth out any ridges that may have been left from using that very small Simon Hope cutter so just a few moments of uh, scraping blending the curve in getting it smooth so when you can or if you can fit <laughs> your fingers inside you can feel how smooth uh, the curve inside is now uh, I turn my attention to the lid as I said it's not a tight wood turners fit it's something anyone will easily be able to to remove um, don't want to have one of those boxes with the lid so tight that you need to pick the box up and grip it with one hand to pull the lid off so just refining where the lid is going to sit inside the box uh, a little bit of sanding and then some hand sanding um, uh, of the top and I'm just using a bit of kitchen roll to provide a bit of padding for that rim so that it doesn't get marked in the chuck just gently tightening it up and then a little bit of refining of that curve on the bottom making it a little bit more concave giving a bit more shape to it a little OG shape it ended up being in the end and then cutting across the bottom and I want to hollow the bottom slightly just so that it's got a, a an outer rim to sit on so it will be uh, sit squarely so I think I was using here a little spindle gouge and then this is one of Les Thorne's round skews just putting some little lines in the bottom a little bit of decoration nothing too fancy I mean this is a piece where the wood really speaks for itself right quite happy with that again you can see the lovely sported figuring in the wood and then a little bit of sanding um, most of the sanding I'll do by hand because obviously I don't want that square bit of wood bashing my knuckles it was actually quite therapeutic doing a little bit of hand sanding right so that's pretty much the box done now no finish on it yet but I'll put a bit of wax on it later on and uh, quite pleased with that nice size it sits in the hand nicely so here's the cord cone that I took out earlier uh, which is going to be the lid just a very little simple shape just a little um, button not a button knob just a little round ball on the top uh, so that you can easily get hold of it and remove the lid so using the spindle gouge because it's end grain turning turning from the large to the small diameter and just shaping that ball on the top um, didn't take very long to do this this part just last little shaping there and finally refining the ball that's going to be a little knob to lift it up okay a little bit of sanding needed and then um, top of the top is done but I want to pay a little bit of attention to the bottom of the top just checking that um, it, it fits and doesn't fall through it is a loose fit but um, it, you know you don't want it so loose right a little bit of packaging again on there and then I'm putting it back in the chuck and I'm just going to hollow out uh, a little bit of the top take some weight from it but also show that it's been reverse chucked and it's not just a lump of wood that I haven't really given much thought to so just a few cuts uh, again because it's end grain cutting from the center out um, and then a little bit of sanding and we're almost there yep yeah, feels nice and smooth uh, so I'll take that out of the chuck and check it on the box lid check the lid on the box sorry and a uh, little bit of um, marking on the on the top which I just got rid of quite easily with a little bit of sanding and there we go nice little box made from a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube you can see how loose the lid is but um, 
there we go no problem getting that lid off well you might have some trouble getting more than a couple of fingers inside there we go quite pleased with that again no finish yet but I'll show you what it looks like with a bit of finish on and here it is the finished square box which is really a sphere contained in a box there's something quite pleasing to me about that but then I am a bit peculiar anyway um, yeah it's not the easiest of boxes to get your hands in I find it difficult to get more than three fingers in um, but uh, I'm giving it to a friend who's got smaller hands so hopefully they won't have the problem of getting things out once they're in there the stills I hope are giving you a, a nicer picture of it showing the, the the nice wax finish quite understated it's quite a simple plain unadulterated project for me I like to do a bit of natural wood every now and again who doesn't anyway until next time thanks for watching oh and if everything goes to plan, next week's video should see the return of the rattle can.